Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. In today's video, we are going to talk about human body systems. Now, the main purpose of this video guys is that you uh, take the um, notes for what is the functions of each body system. However, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how it is that body systems interact with one another so that you need to be able to uh, basically know the interactions or describe the interactions like the subjective is stating here it says to describe the interactions that occurs among systems that perform the functions of regulation nutrient absorption uh, reproduction and defense uh, from injury or illness in animals so basically what you have to be able to do is know how or be able to describe how it is that different body systems interact with one another in order to do the functions that they do so we're going to focus on writing down the functions of each body system but at the same time make sure that you pay close attention to how it is that these body systems interact with one another okay uh, now i have already included the interactions uh, so you need to make sure that uh, you practice those interactions that you remember some of those especially the ones that you perhaps are not too familiar with okay so we're going to go ahead and jump in the first uh, body system that we're going to talk a little bit about is the circulatory system and the main purpose of the circulatory system is to transport oxygen carbon dioxide and nutrients throughout the body so uh, this is basically what I want you to write under that um, function of this body system how does it work though well basically the way that it works is by pumping blood and the pump in here is what we call the heart okay you probably already knew this the heart's main job is to basically take in a lot of the oxygenated blood from the lungs and once it gets it it basically delivers it all throughout the body via the arteries now once they get to the very end of the arteries what happens is that you have these little things called capillaries where you have little tubes coming in and that's basically the artery and then they're very tiny 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 tubes where the oxygen will be delivered into the um the cells so this is where the uh, blood is coming in and then it goes out and then it's delivered into the cells all around that place okay what we call a capillary okay now once it leaves that place what happens is that it um it's filling with carbon dioxide so the oxygen is coming in filling with carbon dioxide and then it's taken back to the heart um so that the heart can take it back to the lungs and the lungs can uh, expel it uh, or expel it out of the body or that carbon dioxide so uh, the way that it goes is basically from the heart through the body uh, via the arteries and then it goes back uh, through the veins into the heart and so on it continues pumping all that blood around okay so the next one is the respiratory system and this is the one that is responsible for taking in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide so the way that it works and you already know it from uh, cell respiration is that we have to breathe in oxygen and when we breathe in that oxygen what happens is that it goes through a trachea and then it goes into our lungs where you have this little sacs that we're going to call alveoli okay and that's not too important that you remember that right now but perhaps in the future when you take an anatomy class but uh, when you get to that alveoli it's basically a little uh, air sacs and very tiny air sacs that are going to um, allow the uh, ves uh, vessels like the uh, veins and arteries to basically release some of the carbon dioxide that is coming in from the blood so it releases it into the alveoli and then it fills them in again it fills it that blood again with oxygen so on one end you have coming out blood with oxygen and then on the other end you have coming in uh, blood that has co2 in it and so it's basically that exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen that happens at the alveolus and that's how your body delivers the co2 and oxygen so once it gets that carbon dioxide back into the lungs basically you breathe it out uh, and that's how you release that carbon dioxide okay so it works very closely together with the uh, circulatory system that is very sure the respiratory system and the circulatory system work very closely together so the next one is the immune system and the immune system is one of those systems that are super super important for our bodies because if it was not for this immune system we'll basically not be able to sustain life for too long now the main purpose of the uh, immune system is to fight and protect uh, the body from foreign invaders such as bacteria and viruses be sure that you also include bacteria and viruses okay because these are things that can definitely cause harm 
into our bodies so that we have to remember that the uh, main purpose of the immune system is to protect us against those things. Now, what happens is that we have a lot of things um, outside of our body that basically protects us against these things. But what happens when they get in? Well, when they get inside of a bloodstream, you have these things called white blood cells uh, or WBCs. So WBCs are white blood cells. Their actual names are lymphocytes. Again, another thing that you don't really have to remember, you just remember white blood cells. Are these huge cells that are actually going to protect us by engulfing any bacteria. So let's say that this is a white blood cell and there's a little bacteria uh, that got inside. So what it's going to do is that it's going to engulf it. So the way that it's going to work is that it's going to go around it like that. And then it eventually basically going to be inside of it where it's going to use lyso uh, lysosomes to break it down and then it's going to kill the bacteria. Okay, we can actually see these things under a microscope. So, um, you know, you can find some videos of this on uh, YouTube if you like. All right, uh, these are some things that also protect us from things on the outside like um, uh, nose hairs, uh, mucus glands that actually protect us from bacteria and fungi to get inside of our nose, uh, even um, viruses as well. And you also have tears which protect our eyes, uh, even saliva, okay? And you even have bacteria in your gut that actually protect you from uh, some really bad bacteria. So, uh, you know, you have that symbiotic relationship with uh, some really good bacteria in your uh, in your gut that protects you from harmful bacteria. Okay, so the next one is going to be the muscular system. And the muscular system is going to allow for movement by contractions and relaxations of muscles. So basically the way that it works is by contracting and relaxing muscles is how you're able to move. You have to remember that muscles are going to be attached to the bones so that it allows for movement. Okay? Uh, and these are the different types of muscles that we have to remember. Skeletal muscles are basically what we call striated. We, all that means is that these are muscles that have stripes to them like that. And they look striated because of the shape of their, um, uh, the cells that they have. And these are voluntary, meaning that you have power. You can use these uh, muscles at your will. Okay, you can use uh, signals from your brain to be able to contract or relax these muscles. And they're used for movement. These are basically all the muscles that are attached to your bones. Okay, the next type of muscle that we have is called smooth muscle. And these are non striated muscles. So these are the muscles that are on the uh, digestive system, on the lining of the digestive tubes, which are basically involuntary. You have no control over these muscles, they move at their own will simply because. Um, whenever you eat, they have to be able to break down all of that food and move that food down uh, the esophagus and then through the um, small and large intestine. Okay, uh, the last type of muscle is the cardiac muscle, which is basically also striated, but this is actually uh, also going to be involuntary because you have no control over this specific muscle. This is a muscle that uh, is very, 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 very strong so that it does not fatigue. So these are the muscles that are found in your heart. So cardiac, you know, if you remember like a cardiac attack, that basically means that you have some, um, you know, breakdown of cells of the uh, heart. So these are the muscles found in the heart, okay? Skeletal for anything that is attached, any bone um, muscles are attached for to the bones. Smooth, so basically in your stomach and small intestine and so on. And then cardiac, the heart. All right, the next system is the endocrine system. And the endocrine system main purpose is to regulate body's activities using hormones. This is the, bo the body system that is mainly responsible for producing the hormones that allows you to grow uh, when you are a teenager. And, you know, later on in life, it allows you to, you know, regulate your body. And even when you're young, it allows you to be able to grow as a, uh, to be uh, a young adult and so on. Uh, some parts that these, um, in the endocrine system has are things like the pituitary gland, which is found in your brain, produces a whole range of hormones, uh, thyroid glands, which also produce hormones, adrenal glands, pancreas, ovaries in ladies, and testicles in uh, males. All right, so this is the endocrine system. The next system is the skeletal system, and the skeletal system main job is to protect the organs uh, also to provide shape and allow for movement and to store minerals. Now, let me just talk a little bit about this. Uh, the way that it protects your organ is by, you know, like things like your rib cage, which actually is going to protect things like your lungs and your heart, which is super, super important. 
Um, it provides shape and allow movement. Basically, the way that it allow movement is by allowing muscles to be attached to them, and that way you can move uh, all of these skeletal muscles. And then it stores minerals. Um, remember we talk, just talked about white, those white blood cells? Well, white blood cells and also red blood cells, uh, which carry oxygen, all of these types of cells are actually made in the bone marrow of bones, and then they're sent out to the uh, circulatory system. So these, um, you know, this is one interaction that the skeletal system has with the immune system uh, for white blood cells, and then with the circulatory system for red blood cells. Uh, and that's why the skeletal system is so, so important. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, you know, your skull actually protects your brain really well. So that's another one for protection there. All right, the next one is the integumentary system, which is basically a barrier against infection. Integumentary basically is your skin. All right, so this is the system that uh, is made of your skin. Uh, it helps to regulate body temperature, and it also removes or excretes waste or sweat. Now, this is not really a big... Um, source of excretion or waste uh, but sweat you know it's part of uh, your cooling mechanism it allows you to cool off whenever you are a little too hot and that's why we sweat um, and it's basically all though your skin it also protects you from uh, bacteria and um, different infections that can harm your body so the integumentary system works very closely together with the immune system uh, and also it can be considered a little bit of the excretory system as well because it allows to um, you know, produce a little bit of uh, sweat. So the next one is the nervous system, and this is kind of like the control center of your body. This is where uh, all of the information is gathered uh, and interpreted to be able to send signals throughout the body. Um, it responds to information and it helps maintain homeostasis. Okay, so this is a system that works very closely together with all the other systems. The nervous systems work together with the uh, you know, muscular system to provide movement. It works together with the uh, endocrine system so that it tells the body what hormones are needed and which hormones need to be produced. Uh, I mean, you name it, this, you know, nervous system is working together with all the other systems very closely. Uh, some of the things that you have to be able to remember is, you know, it's made of the brain, uh, spinal cord or spinal column, and then you have a lot of nerves uh, cells all throughout your body. These nerve cells we call neurons, okay? So these are very quite complex. Uh, perhaps we'll talk a little bit about that in a later topic. So the next body system is the reproductive system. And the uh, function of the reproductive system is to allow for uh, organisms to reproduce. Well, you have the male parts and the female parts, um, things like the testes where um, sperm is made. And then you have uh, the ovaries where the eggs uh, are made. Okay, so this is the reproductive system. The next one is the excretory system. And the excretory system's job is to remove waste products and filter blood. So basically, this is made of your kidneys, which are basically the um, filters for your blood. The blood goes in with a lot of different toxins and different uh, chemicals in them. And then they are basically filtered through the kidneys and then they're sent back to your body a lot cleaner, okay? And the main job is to basically clean up your blood. Um, parts that are made of this are basically the kidney, uh, the ure uh, uterus, and you have the bladder, and then the urethra, okay? Uh, the next one is the digestive system, and the main purpose of the digestive system is to break down uh, polymers into monomers. So it basically also absorb nutrients. So it works very closely together with the muscular system because you have smooth muscle throughout your esophagus, small intestine, large intestine, even stomach. Uh, it also works very closely together with the circulatory system so that when you're absorbing nutrients, those nutrients are absorbed through your small intestine into your bloodstream. All right. The next one is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is the system that carries white blood cells that fight disease and it also collects excess fluids and returns to the blood and this is kind of like similar to the circulatory system but it's a whole system on its own all right i want to go ahead and stop here guys i hope that you found this interesting uh, please make sure that you take your notes and if you have any questions please let me know you also have um, uh, an assignment make sure that you work on that i'll see you on the next
video. Good luck.